Hi, my name is Andrew Meinzer, Meinzer Law Firm. Here we take care of people all across California who are planning to ensure that things go as they want when they die or become unable to take care of themselves anymore, who are handling the final affairs of someone who has died or who are helping someone who is unable to take care of himself or herself anymore. This is the first in a series of six videos about conservatorship court proceedings in California. In this video, I'm gonna talk with you about who might need a conservatorship court proceeding and the types of conservatorships. A few short videos will follow that'll address other topics of conservatorship court proceedings. If someone can't take care of herself anymore, then that person is said to be incapacitated. A person might be incapacitated if, for example, she was in a car accident and now is in a coma, suffered a stroke, has dementia, etc. When someone becomes incapacitated without having done any estate planning, like having a trust or powers of attorney, often a conservatorship court proceeding is necessary to put someone else in charge of all of the affairs of the incapacitated person. There are three types of conservatorships in California. All of them give a person, known as the conservator, a legal authority over another person known as the conservatee, the conservatee being somebody who's incapacitated. The three types are probate conservatorships, limited conservatorships, and LPS conservatorships. Let's take a look at them. A probate conservatorship provides the conservator with legal authority to manage essentially all of the affairs of the conservatee. It normally continues until the death of the conservatee. A probate conservatorship is designed for people who are incapacitated due to conditions such as coma, stroke, dementia, etc. And people don't often recover from these things. A limited conservatorship is designed for people with developmental disabilities such as autism, who may be able to handle many, but not all of their own affairs. A limited conservatorship provides the conservator with legal authority to manage only those affairs of the conservatee that the conservatee can't handle on his or her own. And there are seven powers in particular that can be provided to the limited conservator, as appropriate based on the abilities of the conservatee in each case. Those seven are the powers to, one, decide where the conservatee lives, two, access the conservatee's confidential records, three, decide whether the conservatee marries, Four, enter into contracts on behalf of the conservatee. Five, determine the conservatee's medical care. Six, select the conservatee's social and sexual contacts and relationships. And finally, seven, make decisions to educate the conservatee. Finally, an LPS conservatorship provides the conservator with the same legal authority as a probate conservatorship generally. An LPS conservatorship also provides the conservator with two important additional powers, which are the powers to require the conservatee to receive medication and to place a mentally ill conservatee in a locked facility if a psychiatrist says it's needed and even if the conservatee doesn't agree with that placement. Incidentally, the L, P, and S of LPS are the first initial of the last name of the three legislators who wrote the LPS conservatorship law, who were Lanterman, Petrus and Short. So that's a bit of trivia for you. There are many other differences among the three types of conservatorship. Those differences may be the subject of a future video. In the next video here, we'll discuss the two aspects of every conservatorship and we'll discuss some of the court procedures generally. So I'll see you in the next video.